Hello folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard coming to you from Watchman Studios with another Watchman video broadcast. A little under the weather today. One of these days, I'm going to be above the weather. Maybe hopefully one day soon, but there are some things that I believe are going to happen. I truly believe they're going to happen. In 1997, if you recall my testimony, God called me to study Bible prophecy. I was going to reread all the books I had up until then. I was going to go out and buy new books. God said, Mike, I wrote a book. And I went, that's a really neat idea. Why don't I just read the Bible? And I promised God then that I would try my best to throw out everything I'd ever been taught, ever been heard, uh, ever heard. Um, I even took a class in Bible college on the book of Revelation. <clears throat> Got a D minus <clears throat> in it. And they taught me amillennialism, premillennialism, pre-tribulational premillennialism, and all the isms. And still didn't do well in it. However, when I started reading the Bible and started believing what I read, trying to forsake the old teachings and learn afresh, which is okay with God, he says, test the spirits, prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. So what I'm going to show you today, it matches perfectly everything that I think I've been seeing in the Bible. And that is, and this is going to make some people, it's going to offend some people, it's going to make some people angry. They're not going to like me for saying it. But I would just simply ask that if you are hardened in what you believe, then let what I say not be an offense to you, but a challenge for you not to go back and read Clarence Larkin or um, C.H. Schofield or Jack Van Empey or any of those other guys, but to go to the Word of God alone and ask God if these things be true or not. That's all I would ask you to do. And see, if I get you to do that, I've not failed in any attempt that I make today or any other thing that I do because it's gotten you back into the Scriptures to prove all things and hold fast that which is good. But the thing that I'm going to say is the translation of the church, the rapture, is not first. It is not the first thing that begins God's prophetic calendar. And I will attempt to show you that today plainly from the scriptures. Let's start where we, where we have been. We talked about the sun going dark, the moon going dark, or the moon turning to blood. Now we're going to talk about the things that fall. The falling stars, things that fall here on the earth. And think about anything that falls in the Bible. Dagon fell twice. Jericho fell. Saul fell on his sword. Um, Babylon has fallen. They all fell in the um, plain of Dura when Nebuchadnezzar set up the 60 by 6 image. Get that? Uh, they fell then. They're going to fall. Babylon is going to fall again. Nebuchadnezzar fell, turned into a beast. Hmm, imagine that. And so Lucifer, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? And we'll, we'll go into all of these things. But let's start it out. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. And notice what he says. And remember, do your own study of the word tribulation or tribulations or tribulationing or tribulation, tribulationly, whatever. Whatever form it's in the King James Bible, do your own study of that one word. And ask yourself, did I see seven years? Did I see three and a half years? What did I see in there? And who goes through it? Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And here it is. And I want you to pay attention to what I have underlined. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then, and then 
shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now, a couple of things I want to point out here that he says here. He says, the sun be dark and the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven. Now, I used to ask myself the question, that's got to be like a meteor shower, right? Because that's the only thing that, you know, the stars are, you know, hundreds of millions of light years away. How can half of them or a third of them fall to the earth? And by the way, they're stars. They would just simply burn up the earth. Then you read the Bible and you find out that the stars are more than just balls of light up in outer space. They're angels. The Bible makes that very clear. When the sons of God shouted and the, uh, when the morning stars sang, Job said, I messed that verse up, but you get it. And other verses that we'll read that show you that stars are angels. The star of Jacob is Jesus Christ. He's the bright and morning star. And no, I don't think that's Venus because Venus isn't always a morning star. Venus sometimes, about every four years, is an evening star. So think about that, okay? Uh, the stars, so the stars are more than just stars. They're angels. The powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Pay attention to that word. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. And the sign of the Son of Man and is that he's coming in the clouds. And I've taught on that many times, may do it again. Just to reiterate what it is that we're looking here. Because when he appears in the clouds, that's when we see him for the very first time. And we'll, we'll be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Then it says he shall gather them together with the sound of a great trumpet from the four winds, from every place there is, all the saints are going to be gathered. Both the dead and the alive saints are going to be gathered on that day. And if anybody tries to tell you saints are only Israel, look up the word saint or saints or sanctified. Look up those words. You'll find out that the saints are more than just Israel. The elect. People will try to tell you, well, only the elect is Israel. Israel is the only elect in the Bible. But then look up the word elect, election, elected. Peter said we're elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Look, when people tell you these things, look these words up and find out whether or not they're telling you the truth. Or are they just telling you things that they heard their preacher say, or they heard on TV, or they heard on YouTube, or they read in a book somewhere. Go, always go to the scriptures. Now, that word shaken. The stars of heaven shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. We know, according to many verses in Bible prophecy, that God is going to shake. He shook the earth once. Remember when Christ gave, gave a loud voice on the cross? There was a mighty earthquake. God shook the earth once. And then he's going to shake both the earth and the heavens at the same time. So now consider what, what Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter, one, or chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Stop right here. Make, these, make notes on this and study these words. Gather, gathered, gathering, gatherings. All the forms of the word gather in the King James Bible. There is a gathering of the wicked. Like with the tares, they're gathered together first. And then the wheat are gathered together and put in God's garner, which is heaven. Okay? Reserved. Study these words in a King James Bible. And I promise you, I promise you, number one, you're going to be blessed. You're not going to be wasting time studying words out of the Bible. Studying the Bible is never a waste of time. 
And even if you, even if you end up and say, Pastor, I still don't get it, you've studied the Word of God. God will use that in your life somehow, some way, because one of these days, the devil's going to shake you. And when Paul said here that you be not soon shaken in mind, and I can tell you, dealing with bouts of depression and anxiety, I know what that is. You get shaken in your mind. You, you feel like somebody just hit you with bad news and your heart sinks and you just, you can't think. Been there. But I believe when this day happens, I won't be shaken. Okay? That you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Look at that. Look up the word trouble, troubled, troublings, troubleth. Neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any books, by any radio programs, by any YouTube videos, by, by my YouTube videos. Let no man deceive you. You study this book and this book alone for yourself. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Now let's go back to Matthew. What happens first? We have the tribulation of those days. Then we have the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And we're going to see a connection to this in Revelation. We're seeing it in a bunch of other places too. How that when you shake, things fall. What happens when an earthquake happens? Things fall. So they're connected together. The falling away takes place for, and this verse, at, upon reading this verse as part of my study years ago, at bada boom, bada bing, I am done believing that the rapture happens first. I can't say that the rapture happens first because the falling away happens first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Notice I have underlined, starting in verse four, God, 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 God. How many times? There's your fourth kingdom. That's the reason why it's there four times. And in verse four, I would say it's the, it is the basis of the fourth kingdom. The, the iron mixed with miry clay, the five and the five joining together, the Masonic handshakes, what of whatever version they are. Okay. You got five and five joining together, iron mixed with miry clay, heaven and earth joined together. That's what that means. Every Masonic symbol means the exact same thing. Key going into a lock. Well, you get that. Handshakes, the way they cross their legs. Uh, everything in the Masonic temple shows forth the joining of heaven and earth beginning a new age for mankind. A transformation of mankind. And it produces something. The letter G in the square in the compass. God. Notice all the capitalizations here. God, 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 God. He is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, who opposes the, uh, and exalted himself above all that is called God. By the way, this is called God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, I said this a while ago. Remember the ten toes? Five on one, five on the other. Remember you have the ten virgins. Five are wise, five are foolish. I saw this pattern putting all this together and it just thrilled me. Watch this. First Thessalonians 4. This is about the translation. Notice there are five things here. I've pointed this out. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with, number one, a shout. Number two, the voice of the archangel. Number three, with the trump of God. And that's not Donald Trump. Number four, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Number five, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with 
the Lord. Five things happen here. And I noticed also that in the second witness to this doctrine of the translation of the saints, that's what happened to Enoch. He was translated up into heaven without seeing death. So in the translation of the saints, you have two primary verses out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. So we have 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, and we have 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. Notice five things. Behold, I show you a mystery. Number one, we shall not all sleep. By the way, this is the fifth occurrence of the word mystery in the Bible. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Five things. We shall not all sleep. We shall all be changed in a moment. The twinkling of an eye, last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Our change, resurrection, translation, rapture, being caught up, whatever you want to call it. It's the exact same event. And there are five things here. I'm not done. Now notice, we, in 2 Thessalonians 2, he said there shall be a falling away first. Falling away first. There's another place in the Bible that shows people that fall away. You, and study, and I've done a, uh, some videos on this, the falling. Look those up. And you see all the things in the Bible that fall. We'll try to remember some of those as we go along. But Hebrews 6. I, I didn't realize this until I'm studying this, putting it together. The Holy Ghost said, Mike, look that up. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4. He's telling you something. It is impossible for those who were, number one, once enlightened. Number two, have tasted of the heavenly gift. Number three, we're made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Number four, and have tasted the good word of God. Number five, and the powers of the world to come. If they shall what? Fall away. To renew them again under repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Five things take place in a person's life. And yet they still fall away. And once they do, there's no getting back up for them. It's like the five, the five foolish virgins. Oh, they had lambs, just like the wise virgins. They tasted of the heavenly gift, tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, but they didn't put no oil in their lamps. And then when it came time, they said, give us of your oil. They said, there won't be enough for us and you both. Go, go, to your, go get your own oil. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Boom. Five. And they don't get to go in. While they left, they left. The bridegroom came, took the five that were ready with him. You see it now? It's five things that happen here. And they still fall away. I never knew that until I started putting this together. Then, Isaiah 14. You know what that is, don't you? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Five things, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, number one, I will ascend into heaven. What is it we're going to do? Ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. What is it God said we're going to do? Judge angels. Number three, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. That's heaven. That's Mount Zion. Psalm says that, Mount Zion. Okay, in the sides, in fact, it, it says it, look it up in Psalms, Mount Zion in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. That's where we're going. I will be like the most high. The Bible talks about how we have the divine nature in us. And we're going to be in the image of Christ. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 
Satan wants what we're going to get, those five things, but he can't have them. He's going to fall, isn't he? You start putting all this, listen, this Bible's in order. God puts this order in here to teach us how he's going to do everything. Now, watch this. Revelation, and I think this is Lucifer. I could be wrong, but it matches the pattern. Revelation 9, 1, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. What's he going to do with that key? Well, we know, We're, and we'll see it later. There's, there's verses I never knew about that talk about the earth being shaken and opened up and the wind, windows of heaven being poured out. And no, I'm not talking about the days of Noah, although that's part of it. Verses I never knew or never put it together until God started putting this thing together. No wonder I'm, no wonder I'm sick. I've had congestion. I've, had, I've been coughing my head off. I've had a massive sore throat. God's help, God helped the Sudafed help me. Amen. Five more things. We're not done. Galatians 5. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever ye are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. And the law is a reference to Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The Pentateuch. Penta meaning five, like Pentecost. And that's the law. And those who say, we're law keepers, we go, to, we go to church on the Sabbath, we're better than everybody else. We're saved and nobody else is. They have the mark of the beast on them because they go to church on Sunday. Or we keep feast days. What do you do? Christmas. That's what they do. They brag. That's why we're not saved by works, we're saved by grace. Because anybody, anybody who does a work even me, whenever we do something good, we boast, brag, get cocky, proud about it. God has to whoop us, let us get away from him so we realize we still ain't nothing without him. But anybody who's got a works-based salvation, they're fallen from grace because they have no idea what grace is. And I've seen I won't say I've seen everything on the internet because I think there's stuff still coming out. If you don't go to, if you go to church on Sunday, you're, you're a, a reprobate. You can't go to heaven. Um, if you do this, if you do that, if you take, I ate McDonald's cheeseburger on a Watchman broadcast years ago and people called me the Antichrist. I'm not kidding you. They fell out of their chair and said, he's a shill for the government. He's a new world order. He's going to tell us to get on FEMA trucks. I ate a cheeseburger for crying out loud. I was trying to be funny. Needles. Big pharma. If you take pharmaceuticals, you're, you're lost. You people know nothing about grace. You know absolutely nothing. You boast about what you don't do or what you do do. You boast about those things and neglect to tell everybody the things that you do that are a, a written out sin in the Bible or things that you're supposed to do that you don't do that are clearly a sin in the Bible. And then you tell everybody else how they're going to hell. Now, let's read our companion verse, Mark chapter 13. This is going along with Matthew chapter 24. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And Mark says it in verse 27, the way Matthew said it. And then shall he send his angels and, they, and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. His elect. 
That's us. And it is Israel too. He's going to gather them together too, I believe. But it's only, it's only after the falling takes place first. Now, where is it in the book of Revelation that this event is specifically to the letter mentioned? We have the sun uh, turning dark, the moon either turning dark or turning to blood, the shaking of both earth and heaven, the powers of heaven being shaken, and angels falling out of the sky like the stars. That's in Revelation 6. What does that number mean? I covered this in Pastor Mike Online Thursday. The number six represents the hybrid, sons of God, daughters of men, joining together to produce the giants. I'm reading a really good book right now on giants. I can't recommend it because I haven't got all the way through it yet. Uh, when I get done, I might recommend it. You get it from Amazon. You can get it uh, on your Kindle. That's where I'm reading it, on my Kindle. It's cheaper that way. Um, those giants were everywhere. And they were always the enemy of us humans. And they were hybrids between the sons of God, these fallen angels, and the daughters of men. So now watch this. In Revelation 6, we have the opening of the sixth seal. And watch what happens when that sixth seal occurs. This is why. This is reason 2812 why I don't believe that anything out right now in the form of a pill, in the form of food, in the form of a vaccine is the mark of the beast yet. It's we're not there yet. It's not until this happens. And when this happens, this is going to be the fourth kingdom, the iron mingled with the miry clay. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That, my friends, is the mark, is the transformation. It is the being born again of, of corrupt seed. Okay? Revelation chapter 6, And I beheld he had opened the sixth seal. This is Christ doing this. Not the new world order, not Satan, not us. Christ only. And lo, there was a great, what? Earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Remember last week. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. If you remember, if you remember, in both Mark 13 and Matthew 24, he says, now learn a parable of the fig tree. That's Mark. Matthew 24, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. And a lot of, a lot of prophecy scholars and prophecy people say the fig tree is Israel. So Israel became a nation in 1947. Therefore, the rapture is going to take place in 1987. Oh, no, wait a minute. We were wrong. 1997. Oh, wait, we were wrong. 2017 and they're still wrong he did not say a word about the fig tree being israel he said the fig tree was when you see all these things what the stars fall from heaven the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and all that stuff all the things that preceded that verse that's what that fig tree represents because he says it here as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a what? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there, see, they were gathered and there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. 
and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There was another place in, I think it was Acts 4, <clears throat> that the Holy Ghost came down and it shook the place. Yeah, verse 31, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spake the word of God with boldness. See, I think right here is when Israel, the veil is lifted off of them and they receive the double portion of the spirit that Elijah had. Where Elijah were taken into heaven, Elisha gets the double filling, the double portion, the New Testament. And the place shook when it happened. Mm. See? You start adding these things together and it makes more sense than all the books do. <clears throat> Verse 14. The heaven departed as the scroll as went in is rolled together. Did you know that's in another place in the Bible? Guess where we're going next. The heaven departed as the scroll went in is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. That, that's mentioned other places. The kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb for the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand? We have the rich, the rich people in this world are doing two things. Number one, they're buying into these luxury bunkers former military bunkers and they're being converted into luxury bunkers for the rich and the wealthy to go and hide in in case something bad happens they and they're planning on it two why is jeff why are the two richest men in the world jeff bezos and um um the the, the, the dutch guy i can't remember from south africa anyway why are they trying to build all these modules to go up into space? Robert Bigelow is doing the same thing. Why are they trying to get us to live up there? To escape the wrath that God's going to pour down on this earth. But they don't understand. When God said he's going to shake the earth, he's going to shake the heavens too. And no matter where they're from, they're all going to come falling back down. Um, Verse 16, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? Remember, Paul said this uh, in 1 Thessalonians 5 when he mentioned the travail on a woman as a, who's fixing to have birth, give birth to a child, a man-child. And... Um, it says, God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. That's 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. See, we're children of the light. When these things start to happen, we're going to go, I see stars falling. I see, like figs. I hear a, a rushing mighty wind. And the shaking, and we'll study this more, not today, but it's in Hebrews where God says when he shaketh the heavens and the earth there are those that once the shaking take place they remain they don't they're not affected by that shaking and that's why Paul said that you be not soon shaken in mind because I absolutely do believe that even though God lets me go through fear anxiety shaking now that on that day I won't shake. And it won't be me. God's going to strengthen my feeble knees. And we'll all be able to stand on that day while everybody else falls, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I love this Bible. Now, I mentioned to you the, there's another place where the heavens are departed as a scroll. Remember, Revelation, I think, is an index to the whole rest of the Bible. It'll tell you 
when, where, how, why, everything that you see in Revelation. You can't segregate the book of Revelation from the rest of the Bible because then it won't make sense. You'll be coming up with all kinds of stupid stuff like Tim LaHaye did and all these other commentary writers. Isaiah 34, 1. Come near, ye nations, to hear, and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll. Next, look what it says. And their host shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as the falling fig from the fig tree. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Any, any branch that beareth not fruit is cut off and cast. When you're cut off, the leaves fall off. The falling fig from the fig tree. That is right from Revelation chapter 6. These two are uh, none shall want her mate verses. Isaiah said that. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail and none shall want her mate. Isaiah 34 is mated with Revelation chapter 6 and the opening of the sixth seal. And, this, and it's number 6 because it represents when these stars fall from heaven, what are they going to do? These sons of God seeing these beautiful young human women, or even the ugly ones, they're going to mate with them. They're going to join themselves with them. So, or just all mankind. Somehow, some way, they're going to mingle themselves with the seed of men. Okay? That's when that happens. Isaiah 2. Notice this. Enter the rock. This is Revelation 6. This is Isaiah 34. This is a third witness to it. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and what? Lofty. That means like clouds without water. Lofty. Lift it up, high, arrogant, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low, and upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up. He compared the cedars of Lebanon to the giants, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower. 9-11. We got high towers, we got high towers orbiting the earth space station and we're fixing to put high towers on the moon and the Lord Terry's is coming will be on Mars that's high that's up there that's not a cross somewhere that's up there upon every high tower and upon every fenced wall and upon all the ships of Tarshish and upon all pl pleasant pictures and the loftiness of men shall be bowed down and the haughtiness of men shall be made low and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day and the idols he shall utterly abolish. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks. This is Revelation 6. Isaiah 34. And into the caves of the earth. For fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. When he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. And in that day a man shall cast his idols of silver. And his idols of gold. Which they made each one for himself to worship to the moles and to the bats. What's he talking about here? I'm going to show you. I'm going to go weird on you for a minute. Just ignore me. Now when he says they shall cast his idols of silver and idols of gold, wouldn't it be something if before we leave, we preach the gospel and Roman Catholics and Buddhists and Hindus and Muslims, and anybody that worships a stick, a rock, a tree. What if a bunch of these people get saved on that day? 
wouldn't it be worth it? Wouldn't it be, is it worth it, ladies? When the travail comes, then the baby's born, is it worth it? To go into the clefts of the rocks, verse 21, and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of His majesty when He ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Now He says they're going to be given, they're going to cast them over to the moles and to the bats. Now, Isaiah 13, Isaiah 34, other places in the Bible, uh, Psalm 22, he mentioned the bulls of Bashan, he mentions other creatures throughout the Bible. I believe there is an earthly representation of those, and I believe there is a spiritual interpretation. I think for every creature that we see on the earth, I think there is a a spiritual, whether good or bad, representation of that. Doves, fowls of the air represent spirits. We know that from the parable of the uh, seed and the sower. Uh, dragons living in palaces of man, that's spirits. Owls, you've heard me talk about, um, back when I did the series on cryptids, how the people were seeing Mothman in uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. And still to this day, people are seeing weird, winged, humanoid-like creatures like what you see in Ezekiel chapter 1. They have the form of a human body. They stand on two legs. They got weird, weird wings, big red eyes. A guy named Lon Strickler, he's a guy who lives up in Chicago. He's written multiple books. Brad Steiger has written on this. Um, who else? The French guy that writes books on, Jacques Vallée writes books on UFOs, Passport to Magonia. He talks about how all the stories of fairies and elves and gnomes and trolls uh, could have an ET connection. But what they are is it, they're, they are evil spirits, familiar spirits that live on this earth and live in places. And at times, just like Paul said, be careful to entertain strangers, for you might be entertaining angels unaware. Okay, there, there are, the Bible's telling us there are angels, good angels on this earth right now who make appearances from time to time and they're good guys. And Paul said, be nice to them, be careful to, to them, entertain them, feed them. I think we did that one time here. I can't prove it, but I think we did. Just as that can happen, I think evil beasts from the other realm can be seen. So he writes, he's written several books, Strange Encounters, Phantoms and, and Monsters, Winged Cryptids is one of the new books he's got out, Humanoids, Monsters, and Anomalous Creatures Casebook. This is accounts of what they call the Chicago Batman. Now that's interesting because Superman lived in Metropolis, that's supposed to be New York City. Batman lived in Gotham City, that's supposed to be Chicago. Everybody knows that. So look at here, August 6, 2017, two concert goers see a bat-like flying humanoid with glowing red eyes in Grant Park following the Chicago Lollapalooza. I don't doubt that one bit. You got all these rock and roll artists playing this music and all of a sudden spirits start manifesting everywhere. Duh. August 9th, a couple are startled by a large winged being with bright red eyes flying over Lake Shore Drive. August 10th, a city employee sees a giant owl flying off Chicago's Ohio Street. And the list goes on. And this is, a, this is an image of what they're seeing. It looks like the Mothman. Here is an, a witness rendering of the Batman that they saw. Here is a, a, a supposed picture. I can't prove it. Chicago's one of, the, one of the murder capitals of the world. And supposedly, these beings are like harbingers because of death. And remember it in Isaiah 13, Isaiah 34, and other things that we see about dragons, they dwell in wilderness places. They dwell in the valley of the shadow of death. Is Chicago a death city? Are you kidding me? Um, here's some more witness drawings. There was even the... Um, one of the Aztec or Mayan or Incan tribes identified the bat deity with their god Zotzelaha Chamulcan, the god of fire. Popol Vuh, 
A Mayan sacred book identifies Zotzaliha as not a god, but a cavern, the house of bats. And here's their renderings of this bat-like humanoid god. There, and yes, there is even a mole man. There are dog men, dire wolves have been seen. Skinwalker Ranch had one. There's a video of a dire wolf on YouTube. Huge black, and I mean talking like six feet tall black wolf. Okay? Yes. I believe that. I believe people are, and they're going to see more. So when it says that they're going to give their idols to the moles and to the bats, I don't mean that they're just, here, here mole, here take my, my idol of Mary. I think spirits are attached to those. Now, look at Job 38. The shaking. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days and caused the day spring to know his place? The day spring is the morning. It's when the day springs. Okay, it's like the crack of dawn. That it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it. See, I think God's going to separate everybody right then on that day. All the good angel or and the bad angels and all the good people and all the bad people. He's going to separate them by shaking everything. And those things that remain and stand, you're going to know the difference between who's right and who's wrong. Psalm 18, verse 4. The sorrows of death compass me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. What are we thinking of? The days of Noah. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. And he heard my voice out of his temple. And my cry came before him, even unto his tears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. Isaiah 24. Look at this. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall, shall be taken in the snare. Is there something going to come up out of the pit? Revelation 9. And the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. Look at that. That is ex Genesis 7. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, in the 17th day of the, the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open and the rain was upon the earth 40 days, 40 nights. That 40 days and nights, they're opposites. That, that's your fourth kingdom. That's the fourth kingdom coming to this earth from beneath the ground and from out of heaven. Going back to Isaiah 24, read that again. The windows of, from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth has moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. What do drunks do? Kenneth Hagin. Remember what he said? Have you ever seen that video? It was from Life Christian Center up here in St. Louis. It's a very famous Kenneth Hagin video where he shows... He's going around acting like a drunk and Kenneth Copeland and all these people are laying on top of each other, men upon men with women all laying in a big pile. Like, and he said, drunks fall down and he just wave his hand. They're having a hold. It's a show, but people are getting a drunken spirit there. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. And it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, the host of the angels and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together. Look at this. As prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. After many days they shall be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. Everything that we just read.
condensed in Isaiah. And I never put that in there. I, and I've read Isaiah 24 before. I never saw that before until now. Mm-mm-mm. Revelation 9, you know what that says. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And that happens for, it's the fifth angel, and it takes place for five months. And how long did the waters prevail upon the earth? Five months. Exactly. Same, same exact amount of time. Revelation 12. There appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. But remember what happens to the child? We read that last week. The child gets caught up into heaven. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort. Comfort is a Holy Ghost word. Comfort is a scripture word. The word comfort, 66 times in this book. We're not supposed to fight over these words. And I, I don't. People have called, wanted to argue with me, debate. And I don't like it. And it's not, please, it's not that I can't handle reproof or change or being shown that I'm wrong. I've had people do it humbly, kindly, like they were my friends. And then I've had people that all they wanted to do was jump on me and dominate me by not letting me get a word in edgewise by not letting me even read scripture as to why I believe what I believe. And that kind of spirit, I just, I just, it's because I know me and I know that there's a guy in here that really wants to yell and scream and get mad and throw a fit and call people names. And I don't like that guy. And I try to hide him as much as possible. You got that guy too. Don't tell me you don't. But I try to keep that guy in and, not, and don't ever let him out. But I'll be honest with you, I'm human. And I can get my buttons pushed. And people have tried and in some cases succeeded. And I, I am sorry for that. I was wrong. So if you want to have a conversation with humility, less how is it that we're supposed to go to sinners to correct them with humility lest we be taken in sins just like they are and, and I guarantee you you go to somebody in arrogance and pride to show them what kind of fool they are God will do the same thing to you too probably worse because you did it to a brother you did it to a family member and so I don't, we're not to argue over these things. We are to comfort one another with these words. And I hope that in anything that I've said, it would be a, a comfort to you to know that even though you're having tribulations now, even though you're being shaken at times now, <clears throat> you know, Pastor contacted me recently about uh, God said in the Psalms he shall give us hinds feet have you ever seen these mountain goats scale cliffs that are nearly impossible and I saw a video yesterday on YouTube 
of these goats, there's a, there's a, uh, a brick and rock and mortar dam somewhere over in Europe. And even, even the kids, these mountain goats, climb these things because water seeps out of the dam and they go and they, they lick that water because they need the salts and the minerals and the calcium coming through those rocks. They need that in their body and that's the only place they get it. So they scale these things and even the kid goats climb these things without fear. And I'm just, and I said, oh, to God that God, see, God put it in their nature not to be afraid. But I'm afraid. So I think God allows us to be shaken, allows us to be afraid, allows us to be taken sometimes. Only to show us that when this day comes, we'll be absolutely stunned and amazed at the fact that we're still standing. Because we know that usually, 99 times out of 100, we fall on days like this. But when it's all over with and we realize we're still standing, we won't say, I, I knew I could do it. We'll be going, God, thank you, Jesus, for doing this for me. All the praise will be going to him. Amen? And if you got blessed out of anything that I read here today, you praise God for it, not me. You tell God thank you, because I am. I'm, some of these verses, like I said, blow my mind how God ties it all together. Don't worry about all the crooked politicians and the New World Order people getting by with everything. They're not going to get by with nothing. They're not. God's just waiting for the right time. And when the right time comes, we'll be glorified. They'll be brought down. Even if they even if they make it to some other galaxy, God's going to shake the heavens and knock them right back down here. He's going to judge them, every one of them. Mark it down. It's already marked down. Lord bless you. You're the reason why we do what we do. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your support always. We couldn't do it without you. May the Lord bless you as you bless us. Pray for the people of Kenya. Pray for our ministry. Pray for me. And I thank you for doing it so far already. May the Lord bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.